Attention married couples, this video is for you because by the end of this video, we are going to share with you all the nitty gritty details that you should consider before you get a life insurance policy. My name is Carmen. And I'm Darius. And Carmen and I, we've been married for a little over 10 years now. And in that time frame, we have our fair share of policies and experiences with policies and couples. So we wanted to create this video so we can uh, let you know how we go about getting policies, um, some of the mistakes that we made and some of the wins that we had also in this process but before we get into it make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to be notified when we post new videos all right let's jump right into it so what i'm going to say uh when with our specific journey with life insurance i can't say that i necessarily valued exactly what i was getting into um, i knew that it was important i knew that i needed to check the box but i just checked the box and i just kind of left it at that <clears throat> so what i mean by that is when darius and i were first married we got term life insurance we both had our own policies and I believe at the time it, it was a million dollars in death benefit, roughly. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just thought we were good. Um, but having had more life experience, um, having had, you know, um, a lot of deaths in the family since then, it, it just really put in uh, things into perspective as far as recognizing the value that your family members are bringing to your household, one, on an income level, and, and then two, just, you know, from, from an emotional level and recognizing how difficult it can be to try to replace that person. Mm -hmm. And throughout the whole grieving process, you know, it can be even more difficult when you are strapped for cash. So in this video, again, we just wanted to have a serious conversation amongst couples and make sure that each member of the family has insurance and is properly insured because just because you have insurance doesn't mean that you your insurance will cover your income should something happen to you. Mm -hmm. So for Carmen and I, we, like she said, we had term insurance in the beginning, but as our uh, understanding of life insurance grew, meaning we just got around some people that had a lot more money than us, their conversations were different, especially when it came to investing, money management, and even life insurance. So that's how we got into this business because we um, were privy to conversations of, of some people that had a lot more money than us. <laughs> yeah. So that conversation went like, oh, well, uh, you know, my wife is insured for $10 million. $10 million? What, what, what's going on? What's she got going on? Or, you know, like, we only got a little measly million. How do we get to $10 million in that benefit? I think that was the biggest eye-opening thing. Like, wait a second. I don't think we understand how this whole thing works. And I say that seriously because, again, you have to value it. And I feel like life insurance is just one of those expenses that we we skimp. We're like, mm -hmm. what can, what is the, 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 what, how many few dollars can I put? How many few? <laughs> How few dollars can I put towards this expense? Because I don't want to have to pay it. And now having a different exp uh, experience for me is about putting as much money as I possibly can towards life insurance because I know it's going to benefit the family. Right. And and even even at that, you, you want to think about where you are um, when it comes to your net worth, because you can go from uh term insurance all the way to banks financing your policies for you there's a big difference in net worth in in between those two so you have to understand where you are in that in on, on that um in that range mm -hmm. but when you go and you start thinking about insurance you want to think about okay what is our household income multiplied by 10 uh, at the bare minimum what is our household income? And we want to make sure that we have income for the next 10 years if something was to happen to us. Mm -hmm. Exactly. For example, right? So if your household income is 200 grand times 10, that's $2 billion. So that means that between the two of you, you need to have at least some form of that. Mm -hmm. And that's just at a minimum. Okay. That and that's on just top. A that's a starting point. And that's on top of y'all, all, all your other investments and assets that you, that you have. Um, you want to make sure at the bare minimum is 10 times your household income. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, when, uh, we first, when Carmen and I, when we switched over from the term to whole life, it started off where both of us, we applied for life insurance. And what we did is we compared policies to see which one would be able to get the most money for the least, the least amount. So it was Carmen because women, um, have a longer life expectancy than men. So if Carmen and I were the exact same age on the same birthday, um, both of us in amazing health, she would still have more death benefit because women have a um, <laughs> longer life expectancy. So you'll see that difference um, when you go to get life insurance. So make mm -hmm. sure um, as a couple, you go and do it together and see which one has the, the, the best numbers. Yeah. Which one has the highest cash value? 
Mm-hmm. That's that's how you that's how you do it. Mm-hmm. And here's a, a hack for you too. So, like we said, we both started with term policies, and then once we got hip to this whole life uh, game, we got our whole life insurance policies. Own Carmen first, and and once they were, and then Darius got one, and then once they were enforced, meaning official, we actually surrendered our term policies. So mm-hmm. we waited till we had coverage, legitimate coverage, with one, and then uh, let the the term policies go. However, I'm uh, a nugget to share with you is when Darius and I started our whole life insurance policies. We really stretched ourselves when we both got whole life insurance policies because it is expensive. So knowing what we know now, um, what I probably would have done is gotten whole life on me because it was cheaper, more affordable for our budget, but I could still get it with a decent price and then get convertible term on Darius, for example. Would mm-hmm. you agree? Yeah, I would agree. And the, the reason why we had to... Um, surrender our term policies is because the insurance company that we were working with only did term. Mm -hmm. So there was no whole life to convert to. So now what, what we could have done or what we should have done is like Carmen said, get the term, which would be convertible within that life insurance company. Mm -hmm. So one of the policies we have um, is with uh, American United life. If we would have, instead of getting two policies, we should have just got, one whole life, one term so that we can save some of our money because it's stressed. It stretched us a little bit Mm -hmm. to where we had to um, not be able to pay our premium for in the time frame on the due date, we had to wait a little bit until we got more money. Mm-hmm. And that wasn't a, a good feeling for us. Yeah. Yeah. I'm it, glad I'm glad we've done it and it's past us now, but I wouldn't go back and do it again. Yeah. And I definitely wouldn't recommend that you do that. Yeah. And also, too, I also wouldn't recommend that you surrender any existing policies term, especially. Uh, I, I'm not going to say all policies because some policies just aren't performing. And sometimes it might make sense for you to surrender it. But if you have term insurance and it's not costing you a ton of money, um, just keep Keep it on board because, again, you never know. Right. Um, and that's something that is different than what Darius and Carmen, Carmen probably would have said a few years ago, um, just with all of the life experiences that we've had. Um, so, again, life insurance is one of those things that you should really consider within your household income to be a significant portion uh, of your expenses, because especially if you have children, you have other loved ones that you're taking care of. You just never know what could happen. And you want to make sure that everyone is going to be covered financially. Are you looking for? a life insurance policy specifically designed to help you accomplish your financial goals and if you have a policy or if you're looking for more education would you like to be a part of a community with like-minded individuals who are all using life insurance to accomplish your financial goals if so click on the link below we would love for you to join the wealth nation money school So the next point, as far as understanding the value of life insurance and how much you want to contribute, the next thing I would talk about is who is going to be doing the insuring. So for example, I have a policy on myself. Darius has a policy on him himself, and it makes sense for us as business owners, especially for us to have policies on each other, because even if we weren't married couples, uh, married couple, we would want to insure each other because it should, God forbid something happened to either one of us, we are a significant part in our business. Um, but this also makes sense too personally to get insurance on each other as well. Again, just more protection for the household. Um, so you can start off with just getting insurance on yourself and your spouse getting insurance on him or herself and then making sure that you understand exactly what you're doing and then just start having more conversations around coverage and understanding that your income is being covered. Because every time you get a pay raise, folks, you should reevaluate how much life insurance you have because now you're living in a different standard because your income has increased. So think about all all those things. Every time now, (laughs) knowing what we know now, every time we got a pay increase, we should have been having a a table conversation, sitting down with our coffee, whatever it is, and saying, hey, what are we going to do? We're going to get another policy. What's happening here? Because we have to cover our income. And a lot of times what I hear married couples say is, oh, I just have uh, a life insurance policy to cover the mortgage should something happen to me. That's great. Great starting point. But what else (laughs) besides the mortgage, right? If you have children, you have all of the child care. If you have bills, you have all of the bills. If you have education, student loans, you still have all of that. There are hundreds of expenses that maybe you're not even considering, but just because you think you have the shelter covered doesn't mean that you have every everything covered. And that's when we talk about with 50% of Americans are underinsured because they don't have enough insurance to cover all of the expenses should it need to be. Right. And it goes back to our understanding of our finances. And because we don't understand our finances, we 
we see what we see in our in our economy Mm -hmm. um and insurance is just another reflection of that being underinsured because they don't know what to insure they don't realize what they're spending money on and how uh how much of a change it would be if you your yeah. spouse was to be widowed. Mm, yeah. We don't we don't understand our finances. So it goes back to understanding our finances a little better so that we can not only buy life insurance, but we can apply the knowledge that we that we've learned mm-hmm. and make more money. Mm-hmm. And it is all starts with what we know about ourselves and our finances and our financial situation. Now, as a married couple, yes, we we are married, but we're also in a partnership. And I think a lot of times we don't treat it as a uh, mm. partnership or or business s mm-hmm. um because we just we just think about you know what's what's on the surface yeah, yeah but just like a business you have to manage your funds you have to manage your your household expenses there's a lot of things that you do that is very similar to a business mm-hmm. but we don't treat it like that yeah. once we start treating it like that then we can have these bigger conversations or better conversations about is your partner even a good business partner <laughs> yeah because if if they're a, a good spouse also means that you're good with managing the household that you both live in mm-hmm. and financially there there is a responsibility between both of okay, you to right. come to the table and, and, and bring something to the table it may not uh, it may not necessarily have to be money but it has to be some type of knowledge to move the ball forward not just for you but for everyone in your household Absolutely. so this conversation that we're having about um life insurance is very very important and what you want to do is approach this conversation together it's very important for you to approach this conversation together because it affects both of you Mm -hmm. and one thing i want to add to because we get this a lot is a lot of uh, couples reach out and say i'm all into this but i can't get my other spouse to have a conversation about money and that can be frustrating you know especially if you're trying to be proactive and maybe your other um uh, significant other is putting their head in the sand um what i would say uh especially you know as we've come through growing through our financial conversation in our household is you have to understand too when people are uh, resistant to talking about money there's a huge fear involved so it may not necessarily be like they don't want to talk about it they could just be scared scared to death of the conversation and it just is it, they're throwing up a wall so try to figure out ways that you can get around the wall with making it less intimidating making it less fearful and maybe just trying to show the plan in a different light as opposed to you 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 ain't doing this you ain't doing that you're spending all the money you're doing this <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> don't point the fingers that won't be productive and then you know thinking about a, a scary topic such as life insurance like well what you trying to get life insurance on before you know like like it, that we've had we've heard all of this folks okay So again, it's just about um, having a meeting of the minds and having a business conversation with your significant others and understanding that you're doing it for the the betterment of the family. Right. And we get you may run a multi-million dollar business. Why do I need life insurance if I run this multi-million dollar business? Well, you need life insurance so that you can cover that that income that's coming in, that multi-million dollars that you have coming in ain't going to last forever. And what's wrong with having a couple more million dollars to add to it? Yeah. And who's going to carry those expenses of that multi-million dollar business? Again, thinking about all those things. Exactly. So we just wanted to make sure that we have this conversation because we haven't had a conversation about or two couples Mm -hmm. um, in a while, Mm -hmm. though we've been married 10 years. And I know there's a lot of things that we could talk about as far as uh, a whole new YouTube being married. Yeah. A whole new (laughs) YouTube channel for uh, being a, a uh, business couples and business couples and business whole nother youtube <laughs> channel for couples and business comment and let us know in the comments if you want us to start that we've been mulling over it I don't yeah know. we used to actually do a, a, big um, a meetup a meetup called couples and business when we were in arizona yeah. and uh it was really fun it was a good time <laughs> um one other thing before we sign off folks if you do not bring in income Okay, that's a conversation that also needs to be had Uh, as a part of the household. You know, maybe you are a stay at home parent and you don't bring an income. You also, too, need to consider the value that you are bringing to your family. It may not be monetary. You may not be bringing home the bacon, but you cooking it up, (laughs) you serving it. You making sure that every everybody's fed, everybody's well. And there is a significant value to that, because, again, if something were to happen to you, who is going to main that, maintain the house? Who's going to maintain um, childcare? Who's going to, you know, raise your babies? Mm-hmm. You have to think about all of those things. And sometimes that that number is 
one of the most significant numbers um, for, for, <laughs> for, for for parents uh, who, who are stay at home parents. It's something my aunt would say. I'm not getting no life insurance policy on me so you have some other uh, <laughs> woman in here taking care of my family. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what we that's, have conversations yeah. for, right? But it, it's real. It, it's real, and you have to think about that. That's why we so said be here living good, eating good. Sitting on my sofa. Yeah, yeah sitting on my sofa <laughs> or a new sofa. <laughs> <laughs> you see where we're going with this. This could not be an emotional conversation. This has to be a strategic conversation. And we wish you all the ton of fun having this conversation. Go into it with open minds, open hearts, and knowing that at the end of the day, you all are just trying to, to do better for your family. Right. Now, we talked a lot about life insurance. So if you want more information about the ins and outs of life insurance from an insurance agent's perspective, then check out our next video where we talk about life insurance from our perspective. And don't forget to own your own lifestyle. Or someone else will. Or be sitting on your sofa. <laughs> <laughs>